When we're reading Daniel 9, is that talking about a tribulation period in the last days? Or is that referring to the Messiah and his mission? And what do LDS scholars say about that? Welcome to The Last Dispensation. You're living in it. All right, here's the deal. In a world teetering on the brink of chaos, brothers and sisters, one question looms larger than ever. Are we living in the last days? Is the great tribulation upon us? Hey everyone, it's the last dispensation here today. We're diving into a topic, one of the most controversial, I would say, and misunderstood topics in all of scripture. But before we begin, make sure you smash that like button, subscribe and hit the bell for notifications so that you more content that is just groovy, groovy ghoulies. Remember groovy ghoulies? And brothers and sisters, your support, I'm, I, I appreciate the little bits that I'm getting from Venmo Cash App, PayPal, and Zelle. Brothers and sisters, every bit helps, and thank you. We definitely need more help. So if you can contribute five bucks, 10 bucks, whatever you could do, 20 bucks, that would be awesome. It helps support the, the program in so many ways with equipment and traveling to Utah and eating and, and paying the electric bill and, and insurance and all that good stuff. Trust me, you won't want to miss what's coming up next. Now let's get into it. The Great Tribulation, a time of unparalleled suffering, I would say, and also divine judgment. But when will it happen, folks? And how long will that last? And most importantly, what does that mean for us today? In Matthew chapter 24, verse 21, Jesus himself spoke of this time, saying, For then shall be great tribulation, such as was not since the beginning of the world, to this time, no, nor ever will be. What is he talking about? Well, we know that there's tribulation, but my point is, is it a seven year? Is it half of that seven years? Is that what Daniel was talking about when he's talking about the abomination of desolation, which we know that happened in antiquity around 70 AD. But what are we talking about? Are we talking about an antichrist? Is there only one antichrist? You know, where the Pickering's right, uh, or are there just many antichrists in general? Already, are we already in that tribulation period? So this is where it gets interesting, brothers and sisters. While many evangelicals and scholars point to a specific 3.5 year period, the truth is we can't be absolutely certain. So where does this idea come from? Daniel chapter 9, verse 27. Let's read that. The book of Daniel speaks of a week of years, with the second half being a, a, a time of great distress. Uh, this 3.5 or half week period is echoed in other passages, like in the book of Revelation, chapter 11, verse 2, and Revelation, chapter 12, verse 14. But here's the kicker. As Latter-day Saints, we have additional additional insight from modern revelation and prophetic guidance. And not to uh, rehash this over and over again, because this is probably the most quoted uh, statement by our prophet today, uh, right now, probably within the last year, I would say more than ever, in every seminary class, every Sunday school class, every priesthood meeting, and that is... Uh, in coming days, it will not be possible to survive spiritually without the guiding, directing, and comforting and constant influence of the Holy Ghost. Now, why do I bring that up? Because this is in reference to tribulation, right? Of course. So let's look at what's going on here. Let's look at what Latter-day Saint scholars believe uh, as opposed to, uh, and not all Latter-day Saint scholars. Some teeter and, and are, there's a divide there. And uh, evangelicals. 
So I learned a lot from evangelicals watching different things as I was growing up. And many of you did too, because we weren't getting this a lot from our own church, especially within the last 30 years um, during the eighties and nineties and even the early two two thousands, there was a guy named Jack Van Impey. He has passed away his wife. Uh, what is her name? Camilla or Priscilla? I can't remember. Rexella. It's Rexella. Rexella. Love that name. I, if I had a, I have one daughter. If I had another, I would name her Rexella. That will be my first spirit daughter. So it'll be Adam and Rexella in the Garden of Eden. Just like, that's if I, that's if I'm the God someday, but we don't, we're not going there right now. Um, so don't get your theology in a bunch. So I was walked, I would watch these guys like Jack Van Impey, uh, and he would talk about this constantly, just last day Armageddon stuff into the time stuff. Uh, I would crave it. I got the tickling ear thing going on and, but it didn't necessarily bring the spirit and, and it doesn't. If you're just constantly bombarded with this, that's why I talk about it a lot here on this platform. But this isn't church, and I'm here to talk about Latter-day Saint things, and, and, and it's a talk show. But I do want to edify, and I do know that I have a certain mission. I know that from my Heavenly Father to slip testimony in there and to spread. the. This is a mission, so to speak, but you understand what I'm saying. This is for entertainment purposes for the saints. This is to learn. This is to grow spiritually, but... This is not a primary source of edification and, and knowledge, okay? I wouldn't say this is a primary source for you to, uh, to build on your rock, if that makes sense. But keep coming back because it's crazy amazing, and, and, we, do, and we do learn things, okay? I'm not trying to, like, downplay me, but... So, so yeah, evangelicals will teach those things. So here's a quick montage of recent headlines. So if you reference the Great Tribulation, okay, let's look at the evidence. There's four things that we look for in Scripture as far as a, a tribulation period. One is increasing global conflicts. Two is unprecedented natural disasters. Three is economic instability and four, a moral decay in society. Now, of course, we could see all of those, but let's take a look specifically. OK, number one, increasing global conflicts, global conflicts. While there are ongoing conflicts constantly, brothers and sisters, there are tensions that we see in various parts of the world. So the situation is very much complex. It's very much indicative of, of an overall uh, global conflict everywhere. The ACLED conflict watch list, and that is real, for 2024 highlights several ongoing and potential uh, conflict areas, including Palestine, Yemen, Sudan, the Sahel region, the Democratic Republic of Congo, Ukraine, and Myanmar. We see a conflict between us and Russia. The United States gets involved in almost every conflict there is. However, it is in, however, it's important to note that conflicts and tensions have always existed. We know that. But the current geopolitical landscape right now, brothers and sisters, is on high alert. It's it's in the red lights. And this ACLED is concerned. And even your agnostic world leaders and, uh, you know, the United Nations, who is a godless bunch, I mean, to say the least, uh, is very concerned and has been making even more concerted efforts towards peace and stability. As of September 10th, 2024, there's been disasters and losses that exceed billions and billions of dollars, brothers and sisters. And that's just in the United States. 20 confirmed various natural disasters have been reported globally even. 2024 reported like crazy, including floods, earthquakes, wildfires in different regions. I mean, I could spend hours 
just getting into that. Ec economic instability. We have mega inflation concerns, not just in the U.S., but all over the world. Because of the world banks. They, they are doing this. They own it. Okay? Satan is the god of this world. And there's much concern. And, and, and much uh, red light concern over the policy of how to manage these things. Mega uncertainties, brothers and sisters. The global economy is not showing the type of resilience that is making the big, the, the smart bankers uh, excited for the future. It, it might be coming back incrementally, like at a 3.2% uh, projected growth rate, but is that going to stick in 2025? What are we going to see? Also, a moral decay in society. Do I need to say any more about that? I don't. Now, I know what you're thinking, brothers and sisters, but wait, Roy. Hasn't every generation thought they were living in the last days in a time of tribulation? Yes. Yes, they have. But President Oaks said, we are living in the prophesied time when peace shall be taken from the earth. Doctrine and Covenants, section 1, verse 35. We are living in that prophesied time. And who told us that? A prophet, seer, and revelator, an apostle of Jesus Christ. But here's where it gets really wild. In 2020, we saw a global pandemic shut down the world. In 2022, Russia invaded Ukraine shaking the global order. And just last year, we witnessed a horrific conflict erupt between Israel and Hamas. Are these the birth pains that Jesus spoke of? The beginning of sorrows. Now I want to hear from you. Drop a comment below with your thoughts. Do you think we're in the Great Tribulation now? Or is it still to come? Also, if you're finding value in the content, we've got some awesome merch. Check the link in the description. And if you really want to help out, you can send a contribution via Venmo, Cash App, or PayPal. Every bit helps, brothers and sisters. Help us continue bringing you this crucial information. So what does the Great Tribulation mean for us as Latter-day Saints? We don't drop that a lot as saints, like in gospel doctrine. We don't say the, the tribulation, but evangelicals do. But I've got some crazy stuff to tell you. Uh, some scholars, and not just Latter-day Saint scholars, but uh, e Christian scholars and other evangelicals interpret Daniel not as something negative, and I'll explain, but something messianic. I'll explain here in a second. But going back to the tribulation, President Ezra Tapp Benson taught for nearly 6,000 years, God has held you in reserve, meaning us, to make your appearance. Okay, we are the children of the last days from the premortal life or ordained to be here in these final days before the second coming of the Lord. Ezra Tapp Benson said that. This isn't just about surviving a time of trouble. It's about fulfilling a divine purpose. That's what we are doing, brothers and sisters. We are part of a great uh, something being played out and being played out exactly the way that many before us saw in, in vision. Like John. Nephi, Daniel, Ezekiel, Isaiah, and many others, Joseph Smith even. The Great Tribulation, whether it lasts 3.5 years, because that's what is taught, that there's this seven years, right? And half, the first three, half, three and a half years will be a time of peace because of a false peace treaty uh, set in place by a world leader or leaders. And then the second half would be uh, this devastation. 
Is that a time of refining, a time of separating the wheat from the tares? You'll hear that a lot. You'll see that in the comment section. I've heard people say that I've said it. One side always thought the other side was going to be weeded out. And then sometimes it's the other side because maybe somebody's not as staunch on something as we think they should be. Look at COVID. That separated both parties. That, that weeded out a lot of people that just said, this is not a, a, a prophetic thing that uh, how, how could the prophet come out and, and say such a thing? It separated some that, that got too political and, and allowed that to do something to their spirits. But we have to remember that these are just men and they're doing the best they can. It doesn't mean they have a crystal ball or that they're always going to receive perfect revelation on everything at all times. But is it a time of refining? So what a tribulation period is, it's a call to spiritual preparedness. That's exactly what President Oaks said, uh, what, what President Nelson has said about the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost is the preparer of all preparers. So that does include, though, temporal preparation as well. The church has long counseled for many, many years that we should have a food storage. Um, I remember when it was one year of, of food. And then I remember in the early 2000s, uh, Gordon B. Hinckley and others said, you know what? If you can get a three-month supply, remember that? And then we were, order, we were ordering like, boxes of wheat and uh, we got a wheat grinder. I remember we had rice and these these boxes, these three month boxes um, with had oil and salt and sugar and beans and rice and just your basic stuff to survive and flour. But that's always been a thing, a self-reliant. So we've always taught to prepare for a, a, a tribulation, temporal preparation and spiritual preparation. But I would say the most important would be spiritually prepared. We have to be anchored in Christ. If we're going to survive a three and a half year period, we have to be anchored so bad. We do. Rooted in the gospel of Jesus Christ. And we have to be guided. We have to allow ourselves to be humble enough to be guided by these 15 men these prophets and seers and revelators. Because when the tribulation comes, brothers and sisters, and we don't know when it's going to happen, whether it's a global event or whether those tribulations are personal trials in a world of tribulation period, it's our faith in Jesus Christ and in his church. Because you can't, uh, you, you, yes, you can unlink them and you can have a relationship with Jesus Christ alone, but the saving ordinances for exaltation are in this church. Now, to address another query, let's explore how the church interprets the Great Tribulation. We know how evangelicals look at it. How does the church? And are there some LDS scholars that believe in the seven year tribulation as described? in Daniel chapter nine, uh, primarily verses 24 through 27. Uh, so LDS interpretation of Daniel's prophecy, scholars in the church generally approach, uh, Daniel nine. <clears throat> they all have their unique perspectives, put it that way. And they combined often traditional biblical scholarship with uh, and, and you know the evangelical insights with their own insights from modern revelation that the world doesn't have uh with L with with our doctrine with our canon so let's look at the 70 week prophecy the prophecy in daniel 9 chapters 24 through 27 is often referred to as the 70 weeks prophecy latter-day saint scholars like many others interpret these weeks okay weeks as uh weeks of years meaning each week represents seven years 
for seven days, right? Each year is a day. Now, there's an interest, like I said at the beginning, there's an interesting concept here. Have you ever heard of a messianic fulfillment? In Daniel 9, a lot of scholars, and not just in the church, but I would say a lot outside too, view this prophecy as having um, dual fulfillment. First, the first coming of Christ. The initial fulfillment is seen in the life and ministry of Jesus Christ. The anointed one mentioned in verse 25 is interpreted as referring to Jesus, not an antichrist. Daniel 9, 24 through 27. Let's read 24 through 27. Seventy weeks are determined upon thy people and upon thy holy city to finish the transgression. Or a lot of people interpret this as a, you know, are we talking about the carnal law doing away with the old law? Think about this. And to make an end of sins and to make reconciliation for iniquity. Is that the atonement of Jesus Christ? Well, we know that, right? And to bring an everlasting righteousness and to seal up the vision and prophecy and to anoint the most holy. Okay. 25. Know therefore and understand that from the going forth of the commandment to restore and to build Jerusalem unto the Messiah, the prince shall be seven weeks. So think, think about this too. The Savior comes in the meridian of time. If we are 7,000 years in like with them, that's counting the millennium. Christ is coming in the meridian of time. That is at 3.5, three and a half weeks. You see what I'm saying? Uh, wait, no, I didn't say that right. Three and a half days, what I meant. And uh, let's keep reading this. And after three score and two weeks shall Messiah be cut off. Did I read that? And three score and two weeks, right? The street shall be built again and the wall, even in troublous times. And after three score and two weeks shall Messiah be cut off, but not for himself, meaning the atonement and the people of the prince that shall come shall destroy the city and the sanctuary, right? Meaning right after that, we had the abomination of desolation and the end thereof shall be with a flood. And unto the end of the war, desolations are determined. And he shall confirm the covenant. So some people think this part right here means uh, that he's doing away with the old law. So we're, we're thinking messianically. And he shall confirm the covenant with many for one week. Right? And in the midst of the week, meaning in the meridian of time, he shall cause the sacrifice and oblation to cease, meaning Christ comes and fulfills the law, the sacrifice. And for the overspreading of abominations, he shall make it desolate. Meaning the atonement, even unto the consummation, and that determined shall be poured upon the desolate. So make of it what you will. The latter part of the prophecy, particularly verse 27 is often associated with events leading up to the second coming of Christ. The great tribulation in the LDS text, duration and timing. So, while some evangelical interpretations, they will strictly adhere uh, to the 3.5 great tribulation based on the half week mentioned in Daniel 9.27, uh, Latter-day Saints tend to be more flexible in their interpretation. Symbolic interpretation. Like I said, some scholars view the time periods mentioned symbolically rather than literally. Extended period. Others see the Great Tribulation as potentially lasting longer than 3.5 years uh, and don't associate that scripture with a tribulation period, which we know we're in one. Right? That's a given. But viewing as part of the general trials and the, the tribulations of the last days. 
relation to modern revelation, uh, LDS scholars often interpret Daniel's prophecy in light of modern revelation. Doctrine and Covenants, section 45. This section provides another context. What I mean by that is events of the last days, and they're kind of supplementing their understanding with Daniel's prophecy of Daniel's prophecy. So here's some unique Latter-day Saint perspectives. Gathering of Israel. Uh, LDS scholars often connect the events of Daniel's prophecy with the prophesied gathering of Israel in the latter days. And then the temple focus. Some say that, uh, well, they, they pay attention to the references to the temple in Daniel's prophecy more than anything. So concluding, while every scholar, whether you're an evangelical, Latter-day Saint, a Christian that's not affiliated to any denomination, we all recognize the significance of Daniel, the prophet Daniel, right? And his prophecies. I would say... Most Latter-day Saint scholars interpret it broader than most um, and leave room for interpretation uh, along with our modern revelation rather than adhering strictly to a 3.5 tribulation period. I think it's very possible that that was talking messianically and about the Messiah uh, doing away with the, with the sacrifice. And 3.5, meaning within the meridian of time that he came to fulfill the law. But what say you? Am I getting that wrong? But the focus is always on a spiritual preparation, brothers and sisters. We know that there are tribulation. But the timeline of that tribulation, I think, is, is not relevant if you're always prepared. We all have our own little second comings, like I said before, when we die anyway. We're taken back to that God who made us. That's in the Book of Mormon. Maybe even for an intermittent judgment. Uh, but spiritual preparation indeed is important. Recognizing the signs of the times is important. On pinpointing exactly uh, dates and durations, um, it's hard to tell. I love Matthew 24. I kind of stick with that because Christ mentions the abomination of desolation. So are we in that great tribulation now? Maybe the Savior is coming soon. Possibly. But here's what I know for sure, brothers and sisters. We've been prepared. And we're still being prepared for such a time as this let me go back to what President Oak said. We are living in the prophesied time when peace shall be taken from the earth. So we're in that tribulation, brothers and sisters. Whether it's going to get way more intense is beyond me, but we're living in the last dispensation. And I am reminding you and all of us to stay faithful, stay prepared, and keep your eyes on the horizon. The best brothers and sisters is yet to come the last days is not a bad thing for the righteous it is a wonderful event until next time do as matthew 24 stay watchful prayerful and stay blessed godspeed <laughs>